I think most of the good things that happened to the English are done to them by Scots. Uh, if only the Scots admired the Scots as much as the English admired the Scots, they might not be so tortured. In January this year, Lord Mackay introduced proposals for the most radical changes to the English legal profession this century. They included line solicitors to plead where only barristers can now. Banks and building societies would be able to do conveyancing for their customers. And lawyers would be able to take cases on on a no-win, no-fee basis. What should justify any person having a right to charge for his skills as an advocate? I believe the answer is that he must have the necessary level of competence and be governed by an appropriate code of conduct. Uh, I think while there may not be enormous enthusiasm in some quarters, uh, there will be a realization, and indeed there is a realization, that the legal profession is there to serve the public and not the other way around. It is the aim of the Green Paper to produce a more cost-effective system. My own experience is, whether one is talking about litigation in the United States or litigation in this country, that costs rise proportionately to the size of the firm of lawyers that one employs. Law is there to serve the community, and the legal profession must be examined as every other facet of the community life. For the head of the judiciary to present to Parliament a paper that drew from his own chief justice the epithet sinister, and from the association of black lawyers, the comment that it was nothing more than a cost-cutting exercise leading to a second-rate service, would seem to me in itself to be sufficient condemnation. I do not believe that this public dispute is good for the legal profession or for its public image. Lord Mackay appears to be suffering because he is not a man who can be influenced or compromised by the establishment. A relative outsider, even in Scotland because of his church, his proposed changes in legislation which will challenge the most powerful clothes shop in Britain are making him an outsider with some of the legal profession. One of the top PR firms in the country has been asked to launch a campaign opposing the legislation, aiming at a fund of around £1 million. Well, I feel profoundly sorry for him because I feel that he's been pitchforked uh, into an arena for which he has little previous training uh, at a political level. He is not accustomed to having to engage in the world of politics. Can he cope with the mounting pressure and antagonism which will test the power of his advocacy and the power of his faith? The uh, prayers that we had today at the opening of the House of Lords, as we have every other day when we seek to fashion legislation, prays for divine guidance in what we're doing. And I believe that these prayers are genuinely said, and said in order that our legislature might be guided to do what uh, is right in accordance with God's will. I uh, hope that I wouldn't uh, leave aside my principles in seeking to discharge the office of Lord Chancellor. In the midst of the onslaught of criticism from English establishment barristers, he must now face a decision from his church which could leave him out in the cold. The synod will be held in the Chapel Street F.P. Church in Venice. The case is very likely to be held in private. Press and public will have to leave the church. Lord Mackay himself will probably not be present. It isn't his private appeal and he can't speak in his own defence. Is there any sense in which the chickens are coming home to roost? to have maintained, um, no doubt for very good personal reasons, his attachment to such a, a small and strict church, um, a really, I mean, a very reactionary body, uh, there's there that side to it, um, then really, to when you break one of the rules yourselves, uh, yourself, I don't think you've got much complaint when the same irrational power is used against you. The Lord Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged, and I uh, really find that I have enough to do to cope with uh, my own faults and shortcomings uh, without seeking to um, 
pass judgment too much. Will it be the church that suffers in the long term, or will it be the Lord Chancellor? If the decision at the Synod goes against Lord Mackay, then I think he probably will reconsider his position vis-a-vis -vis his own church. But I think what is more significant is that there will be large numbers of free Presbyterians who will do the same. And indeed, this petition which has been circulating in the Free Presbyterian Church prior to the Synod, which supports Lord Mackay and expresses anguish and dismay about the decision to discipline him, and the kind of elders who have been attending uh, requiem masses themselves, they will leave and there will be a split in the church. If he is found innocent, what is the future for the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland? If he is found guilty, what is his future relationship with his church? Inverness, which confirmed his suspension because he attended the funeral service of a Roman Catholic colleague, Lord Mackay issued a statement saying he had no intention of giving any undertaking to recant or not to attend a similar service in future. He said, I am from now on no longer a member of the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland. He expressed his gratitude to those who had supported him at yesterday's synod. Miners at the Bilston Glen Colliery in Midlothian have voted to but equally devoted to his job. He's repeatedly made it clear he would find it impossible to carry on as Lord Chancellor if he was barred from attending Catholic funerals. This is something he regards as part of his job and something he's never seen as compromising his principles as a church member. The decision brings to an end Lord Mackay's lifelong association with the church. It's not yet known where he will choose to worship in future. The Lord, Advocate, the Lord Chancellor left Heathrow Airport this afternoon for a holiday in Austria and didn't make any further comment on his future plans. Bilston Glen Miners following the split which has almost halved the church membership. The church is expected to make a statement later this evening. It was a much depleted synod which met today compared with last month's gathering where the controversial decision to suspend Lord Mackay was upheld. These are the so-called hardliners who considered it was time to make a stand on the church's attitude to and denunciation of Catholicism. But today there were only 16 ministers and 30 elders to take part in the debate compared with last month's gathering of more than 80. Also in contrast to the last synod, today's discussion was held in private with press and public excluded. With 14 ministers having quit to join the associated Presbyterian churches and holding their own prayer meetings and services up and down Scotland, the question of who rightfully owns the various churches and manses was near the top of the agenda today. And just as there's been soul-searching on the part of the breakaway ministers, some of those who've remained have had to make tough decisions. It has caused considerable disquiet, even within families, you know, even between man and wife. It has. There's no doubt about it. Yes, it's distressing. It's very much a family sort of church, you know, and you can't, uh, you can't really, uh, when, when a thing like this happens, you can't really but feel for the whole of the, the church. Because in your case, uh, brothers have uh, separated, haven't they? Two of my brothers are in uh, the APC, yeah. Mm -hmm. My mother also. So we go our separate ways when it comes to prayer meetings and so on. Yeah. The discussion continued throughout this afternoon. After four hours of debate, the clerk of Synod emerged to say that no decisions had been reached, but their attitude to the rebel group has at least been defined. Well, the serious feeling towards them is that uh, they are schismatics. And have gone, I've, I've been guilty of unwarrantably bringing up the church. Does this mean that those ministers who've left are now formally expelled? No, no, they, no they're not expelled because they left the church by citing it deed of separation. When they signed that deed of separation, the names were removed of the roles of presbyters. And what will happen to the manses that they now occupy? Well, that would be...